Okay, in this video we're going to talk about dilutions and kind of what they are in general and the very easy equation to use with dilutions and then we're going to do two practice problems. Okay, so here we go. All right, dilutions. So dilutions are actually a really useful thing that we uh, do all the time in regular chem labs or in your high school chemistry lab. Your, your teacher's diluting stuff all the time. And really what a dilution is, is you are just adding water to change the concentration. Of a solution. Okay, so I actually <laughs> I, I do this with my my kids like juice all the time. Okay, uh, I I think that their juice is too sugary for them, uh, and I do not give them like a pure glass of apple juice or orange juice. Instead, what I'll do is I'll fill up, you know, uh, the cup like halfway filled with juice, and then I will fill up the rest of the half with water. So they feel like they're getting a full cup of orange juice or apple juice or whatever, but really they're actually getting a lot less uh, sugar content. It's a, a lower concentration of sugar content in the, the drink that they're drinking because I've added water, right? I diluted it, okay? Um, mean mom, I know. Uh, realistically, in uh, chem lab, so if you go, you know, wherever your, your teacher has their stock room, like in the back of our chem lab, um, we have these huge, like, jugs of, of a very concentrated amount of the different solutions that we'll use. So, like, we have a jug of, like, 24 molar hydrofluoric acid. That's very concentrated. I think we have, I mean, you have a really high concentration of these different substances there because you can have a smaller amount of them and keep them in the stock room and it doesn't take up your whole stock room. Okay, but realistically, whenever we do a chem lab, you know, together, I don't want to give you 24 molar hydrochloric acid. I don't want you to accidentally like burn away your face or your hand or something, right? So I'm never gonna give you 24 molar. I'm gonna dilute it down to something that's actually being used in the lab. So like two molar, one molar, 0.5 molar. Okay, something that's a much lower concentration. Okay, and the way we do that um, is you just add water, okay? And there's a super easy equation, super easy equation for dilutions. M1V1 equals M2V2. Very super easy. This is the molarity of the initial solution multiplied by the volume of the initial solution is going to equal the molarity of the diluted solution multiplied by the volume of the diluted solution. Okay, super simple, really, really simple. The only thing you have to make sure that you check, okay, is that your volume is in the same units. So sometimes a question will give you, you know, you started with like two liters of a stock solution and you need to make so many milliliters of your diluted solution. Just pay attention that you're converting to make sure that these are in the same units for volume. It doesn't matter if they're both in liters, it doesn't matter if they're both in milliliters, who cares? They just have to be in the same units. All right. Other cool things about dilution, uh, there's something called the beer Lambert law. Okay, sometimes it's just called Beer's law. Either way, okay? And basically that has to do with uh, concentration. The, the amount of concentration of a solution is going to be directly proportional to how much um, light can be absorbed in that solution. Sounds weird, but we all kind of understand that intuitively, okay? So for example, if I'm making like Kool-Aid or, you know, the, the Gatorade powder drink and you mix it up, right? The more and more of that powder that I'm adding, 
the more concentrated the solution is getting and the darker and darker the, the hue of that solution is, is getting as well. Okay, so the basic idea of Beer-Lambert law is just the higher the concentration, the, the darker the solution will get, the more light that's going to be absorbed by that solution. So less light is going to be able to travel through, okay? Um, there's a, a complicated uh, equation that we use for this. You won't need to, you're just going to have to, you know, graph molarity versus absorbance. Um, and there's a really cool scientific uh, mechanism that we use, it's called a spectrophotometer, and it can actually check and see the amount of light that's being absorbed in different solutions, so you can be very precise in figuring out exactly what the concentration of a solution is by using a spectrophotometer. Pretty cool. All right, two examples, and that's it. So, example number one, okay? I have a stock solution, okay, of 24 molar hydrochloric acid. So that thing is concentrated, okay? That's a high concentration. That's in the back room of the chem lab, okay? But I don't actually want to use that for my chemistry lab students because I don't want to kill them. So instead, I need, this is going to be my diluted solution, I need 100 mils of a 2 molar hydrochloric acid solution. Okay, so I only need 100 mils of my new diluted solution. And the question is, there's really two questions. Question number one, how much stock solution do I actually need? And question number two is how much water do I need to add? Okay, so it's like a two-part question. And basically you can think about it like this. <laughs> Beautiful pictures for you, okay? I have 24 molar, this dude, 24 molar hydrochloric acid. Okay, so death in a bottle. Neat. Okay, I don't want to give you that. I need to dilute it down. So I need to add some amount of my super concentrated, super concentrated hydrochloric acid. Shh, pour that into my graduated cylinder, or whatever. And I need a 100 milliliter solution of two molar. So I'm going to add some amount of my 24 molar. And then I'm going to go over to the faucet, turn it on, and fill up the rest of it with water. Okay, that way I get my diluted 100 mils. So I need to figure out exactly how much of this 24 molar I need and exactly how much water I need to add. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So here we go. Okay, the easiest equation in the world, M1V1 equals M2V2. Okay, oh good. All right, we're on track. So. Uh, my molarity of my initial stock solution is 24 molar. The volume that I'm going to use of my initial stock solution is I don't know. Right? I don't actually know how much I need to add. So that's V1. Okay, that's my unknown. That's what I'm going to solve for. The molarity of the new diluted solution that I want is 2. And the volume of the new diluted solution that I want is 100 mils. Super simple, okay? Really easy to solve for this unknown. You have 24 molar times your unknown equals two times 100, 200, and I have molarity times milliliter. Don't worry, it'll cancel out, it'll be nice, okay? You have to isolate your variable, right? It's a simple algebra problem. Divide by 24 molar, and if you do it to the left, you have to do it to the right. Okay, 24 molar cancels out. Molar and molar cancel. So I just go 200 divided by 24. I'm gonna get an answer for V1 of 8.3. I'm left in the units of milliliters. That makes sense because I'm asking for a volume, okay? So I need to add 8.3 mils of my 24 molar hydrochloric acid, okay? So if I was like, you know, filling this thing up, I only actually need 
8.3 mils. So this much down here is going to be my 24 molar hydrochloric acid. That's it, okay? Then I need to figure out, right? That was the answer to my first question. How much stock solution do I need? I need 8.3 mils of my stock solution. Then the second question is how much water do I actually need to add? This is easy as well, okay? So you need a 100 milliliter total. I'm here at 8.3 mils. I need to somehow get all the way up to a 100 milliliters, okay? So I need to go over to the sink and fill up the rest of this graduated cylinder up to 100 mils with regular old water, okay? Which means you just subtract, okay? 100 mils minus the 8.3 mils of your stock solution that you're using, and you get what, 91.7? Oh good, I can add my head. Okay, 91.7 mils of water, okay? so. Hopefully pretty simple, it's just an M1V1 equals M2V2, and a little critical thinking to figure out how much water you need to add, okay? Let's say you had 150 mils, so given an initial amount, of 0.55 molar H2SO4, sulfuric acid, in the lab. You're going to now add 450 milliliters of water to dilute that acid. What is the new molarity? Okay, it's kind of a trick. Okay. You're just going to use the same equation as always, and I'm given my initial stock solution. Okay, I am given that my molarity to start out with, my initial molarity is 0 0.55 molar, and my initial volume is 150 mils. Okay, it's asking what is the new molarity? So I don't know. M2, that's going to be my unknown. Okay, it's going to be what I'm solving for. However, big mistake that is made here is it says you add 450 mils of water. That doesn't mean that the final volume is 450 mils of water, which is what most students will do, but not you. Okay, please don't make this mistake. Actually read the question carefully. Okay, so if I'm adding 450 mils of water to my initial solution, then my final volume is going to be 150 mils that I started with plus the 450 mils that I added to get me a total of 600 milliliters of my new solution, my new diluted solution. Okay, so this will be 600 mils. And again, super easy math, right? 0.55 times 150, just plug it in your calculator. 82.5, and you have molar times milliliter. That's going to equal whatever my molarity 2 is times 600 mils. Isolate your variable, so divide by 600. And if you do it on the right, you've got to do it on the left. These dudes cancel. Milliliter and milliliter cancel. Do some math, okay? 82.5 divided by 600, 0 0.14, and you're left in the units of molar. Sulfuric acid, and you're done. Easy, okay? So it's the basic idea of dilutions. Dilutions is just you're adding some water to an initial concentration, to an initial solution, to make it less concentrated. The more water you add, the lower the concentration goes, okay? Good luck.